Okay, so quick review of sine and cosine because you have to know how to do these before we get into the stuff for today. So today is the cosecant and secant graphs which are bounced off of these. So you have to be a master of sine and cosine before we get to that. So we're gonna find the A here. What's our A for this example? Oh, Vanessa's not here, folks. Somebody else gonna have to talk to me today. One half. And the absolute value of that is our amplitude. So our amplitude is one half. What's the B? One, because it's what's in between the cosine and the x, which means our period is 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. There is a phase shift happening here, okay? So we want to remember that because we're going to come back to it. But I want to take that, start with 0, 2 pi times a fourth, 2 pi times a half, 2 pi times 3 fourths, and the last one is 2 pi. We've done this a bunch, so hopefully we start to learn these. They are our quadrant angles. And then we want to come over to our bx minus c, whatever's inside the parentheses. We want to set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So I get my phase shift is a positive pi over 12. That means I'm going to add them on to each of these points. So to the first one, it is just that phase shift because we're adding it to zero. For the second one, we're gonna have to change so that they have the same denominator. So this is times six and six, six pi over 12, seven pi over 12. This becomes 12 pi over 12, so 13 pi over 12, six and six, 18 pi over 12, 19 pi over 12. And then this would be 24 pi over 12, 25 pi over 12. So then I'm going to draw. Oh. My axis, I'm going to plot my key points. So starting with pi over 12. 7 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, 19 pi over 12, 25 pi over 12. You can make them as wide as you want. It doesn't really matter as long as you make sure that they're kind of equally spaced. Your amplitude is a half. So normally we would mark that 1. This would be a half and this would be negative a half. And then this is cosine. So it starts at the amplitude comes down to zero, down to the negative amplitude, up to zero, and up to the positive amplitude. My cosine curve takes on that sort of like valley, hill or valley shape. Questions on that one? If it was sine, it'd be exactly the same steps, except my curve at the end would look like this. If it is shifted up or down, we would plot those points and then shift them up however many spaces. And if there was a negative on the front, we would flip it upside down. So just keep all of those um, transformations in your head because obviously as we move forward, we're gonna use them again. Okay, this is the way the solution want to get into the notes for today. This is going to be the final section that's covered on your test, which is Wednesday of next week. It's going to cover from 6-1 to 6-5, but only what we do today. So we're not going to finish this section today. We're not going to, we're going to leave off tangent and cotangent, and those will not be on your test we will like do an assessment on those after the next test. So, and then this would be the first test of the fourth quarter. I did grade your quizzes. I did um, share the feedback, but not the score. I don't need anybody being confused as soon as they see that score and thinking it, remember it's not going to the third quarter, it's going to the fourth quarter. So I'm gonna keep them muted probably just till Tuesday, but you can go in and see the individual questions and then you could add up your points if you really wanted to. Okay, so. So this, we're starting with, we're gonna do secant and cosecant, okay? 
This one is cosecant. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we actually use sine. We plot sine. We plot the curve as though it's sine. So this is based off of the sine curve. We're going to graph the exact same way that we've already done it using the sine curve. And then you're going to go back and everywhere there's an X intercept, we're going to plot an, an, an asymptote because if it was an intercept, that means it's a zero. And if I flip it upside down, that is now undefined and that creates an asymptote. And then we do these parabola shaped curves to bounce off the max and the min points. So if you look at this graph here, let's just say we had graphed original sine of x. One period of sine of x would look like this. It'd be at zero, it would go up to the amplitude at pi over two, it would come back down to zero, it would go to negative one, and then it would come back up to zero. That would be my initial um, curve for sine. Oh, I see. You're looking, Madison, you're looking at the weekly thing, right? It's on, it's on the regular module. Sorry, we had changed the plan after we moved the test. So then what happens is everywhere there is an intercept, everywhere this curve crosses the x-axis, that would be a value of zero. What happens when I flip zero over one, it becomes what? If I flip zero over one, what's the reciprocal of zero? One over zero, which is undefined. Undefined means you can't have a point there, and that's where these asymptotes come from. So everywhere there was an x-intercept, there's now an asymptote. And then these parabola shapes bounce off of those curves. If I took and flipped every single one of those points, it would flip it in that direction. That's how we draw cosecant. So this graph, this sine graph, is actually not part of my secant curve. It's just what gets you there. So if you were to actually graph this on, let's say your graphing utility, a graphing calculator, you would not see the sine curve at all. You would only see the parabolas. You don't even see the asymptotes. You would only see the parabolas. All right, so if that's how cosecant works, how do you think secant works? So if cosecant uses sine, what do we think secant uses? Cosine, yes. So secant is based off of the cosine graph. So we're going to graph the equation as though it says the word cosine instead of secant. We're going to find our key point. We're going to plot our curve. We're going to plot our curve and then we're going to, everywhere there was an x-intercept, draw an asymptote. And everywhere there's a max and a min, we're going to bounce the parabolas off of it. Today should be interesting if you're asleep, folks. This is going to be rough. You need to wake yourselves up. All right. Y equals 2 secant 1 half x. So what are we going to graph first? This should be fun. What do we do before we get to any of that? What kind of graph are we going to graph first? Cosine. So if it's secant, we're going to first graph cosine. So we're going to pretend that this is actually cosine. Then everywhere there's an x-intercept, we're going to draw an asymptote. And everywhere there's a max, we're going to bounce the circles off of it or the u's off of it. All right, so Madison, from here, what do we do? Good. So what's A? Two, which the amplitude would be the same, right? Because it's the absolute value. Uh, Brianna, what's my B? Might be one half. Good. So then the period is two pi over one half. Keep change flip. And my period is four pi. Ariana, what do I do next? 
Um, you need to find your key points. Good. So the first one, zero. The first one, I take that four pi times a fourth, four pi times a half, four pi times three fourths. The last one is the period. So this is zero. This is pi. This is two pi, three pi, and four pi. Ethan Elias, if I look for a phase shift, is there one in this one? Um, yes. Why? Because of the one half. So the one half is the B. Remember, we need to add or subtract something inside here to get a phase shift. So there's actually not a phase shift with this one. Ethan Mirabal, is there a vertical shift? No. No, no, so there's no phase shift. There's no vertical shift. Okay, uh, Giovanni, do I have to flip it upside down? No. No, so those are all the things you wanna check for. There's no reflection, okay? Which means I go straight to my graph and I put my key points. So I start at zero, I go to pi, I go to two pi, I go to three pi, and I go to four pi. Then I mark my amplitude. Uh, Isabella, so this is cosine, right? Where do I start? At the zero or at the amplitude? The Good, so I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna come back down. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up. And I'm gonna draw my little curve. Then everywhere there's an X intercept, goes what, Juliana? Or Madeline, what do I put where those x-intercepts are if we're now graphing secant? Nate, did, oh, you don't know. Hey, at least you're answering me. Everywhere the, the x-intercept, who knows that answer? Everywhere is an x-intercept goes a what? An asymptote, good, Taji. So these are asymptotes. And then everywhere there's a max or a min goes a parabola. So off this first one, which is a max, and this last one, which is a max, goes that parabola. And off the bottom, which is my min, goes my last parabola. So for me, the rule on these reciprocal graphs is you actually need four asymptotes and three curves. We can find the three curves as it is, but I'm missing some asymptotes. So what I want you to do is for cosine, all you gotta do is come over here and drop your curve down. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're eyeballing that distance but that gets you your next two intercepts. And then from there, you get your other asymptotes. So you want four asymptotes. And three curves. So again, the actual original sine or cosine curve is not part of my answer. It's what gets me there, but it's not the answer. So when you go to do this on your test, you want to, on the homework, it's fine if you just want to make them like different colors or you want to just make, highlight your, your curves and your asymptotes. On your test, you want to do the same thing. You got to make sure that you're proving to me that you know that that curve just was our guideline to get us to the answer, but the cosine is actually not your answer. And it, like I said before, if you were to plot this using your graphing utility, whether it be the iPad app or your handheld one, you actually won't see the asymptotes or the cosine curve. Okay, so the bottom right there is actually what my graphing utility shows. Notice that the curves are obviously in the right pattern. I know for sure that the middle one is right because it's on the y-axis and that second line is two, that's where it's bouncing off. 
okay? I went to five pi on my graph. If I pulled it in a little bit more, those, those actually would have been marked. That would have been pi, five pi, I mean, two pi, all that good stuff. But notice that there's no asymptotes and there's no cosine curve. Those are not your actual answers. The answers are the parabolas, but you do need those to get you there. So when you graph this um, for homework and on your quiz, I mean, on your test, you need to put the four asymptotes and the three curves. All right, go to example two. So this one says graph y equals negative cosecant x minus pi. So what am I going to graph the first time? Olivia, what's my, what am I graphing before I get to cosecant? Rebecca. Oh, go ahead. Sign. Good. So negative sine x minus pi is actually what I'm going to graph. So, Rebecca, what's my A? Taji, what's my A? Negative one. Negative one, which means my amplitude is what? Good. Uh, Tamil, what's the B? One. One, which means my period is what? Two pi. Two pi. Good. Is there a phase shift? We're back to the top. Ariana, is there a phase shift? Yes. Yes. This time there's a phase shift because I'm adding or subtracting something from the X. So we're going to come back to that. First thing I'm going to do is find the key points from the period. This is the same one we did on the warm-up one and from yesterday. So I'm going to do 0, pi, pi, 2 pi times a fourth would be pi over 2, times a half would be pi, times 3 fourths would be 3 pi over 2, times 1 is your period at the end, and that's the 2 pi. So again, I know those points, 1, because they're the quadrant ones, and that's our standard cycle, 2 pi. Also because we've done it like three times. Now I got to look for my phase shift. So, Brianna, if I've got x minus pi here, how do I find the phase shift? You add pi to all of them. Good. So I'm going to do the x, x minus pi equals 0. So that means my phase shift is a positive pi. So add to this, to this, to this. And I get pi. This would be 2 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. 2 pi. 2 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and 3 pi. Um, Ethan Elias, is there a vertical shift? You unmuted yourself, but I didn't hear you. You got a 50-50 shot. Is there a vertical shift? Am I adding or subtracting anything to that trig function outside parentheses? Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, no. no, good. There's no vertical shift. Okay. So, but Ethan Mirabal, what is different about this one? It's sine, so cosine. Okay, and what's this negative it do on the front? Negative, so you have to refine it. Good. Okay, so we're going to graph sine, but we're going to graph it upside down. So I normally start at zero. I still start at zero, but at the pi, because there's a phase shift. I normally go up to the amplitude, but this is going to be negative. So I go down, up, up, down, and then I plot my curve. Now what happens everywhere there's an x-intercept? Madeline. Or Juliana. I'm not sure. It's the same answer as the question I asked you last time. What happens at every x-intercept? Any 
Anybody in here know? Asymptotes. Write that down, Juliana and Madeline. Next time I ask you, that's going to be your answer. Okay. So I said there has to be four asymptotes, three curves. Right now I only have three asymptotes. So you have to add on, and this one in sign, you have to add on like half a cycle, so one little curve in either direction, and it doesn't matter which one. So I'm just going to eyeball and add this one on, but I also could have done it this way, and that does not matter which direction. Okay? So if I added it to the left, then my asymptote would be here. If I added it to the right, then my asymptote would be here. I only need one or the other. I don't need both. And then comes your asymptote, I mean your parabolas. So the parabolas are going to bounce off the top and the bottom or the maxes and the mins. And again, you only need three of these, but it depends on which direction you extend your graph to the right or to the left, which one you're going to get. And then that sine curve was just a guideline, not part of my original, not part of my ending answer. Questions on that one? Does the added one have to be exact on the test? No, it's totally an approximation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we're not going to move in a tangent. I'm going to give you one more example. So So go ahead and again, add that one on. So y equals three secant two x plus one. Again, we're gonna save tangent for after your test that will go on the next assessment. So we're gonna stop at secant and cosecant. All right, where'd I leave off? Giovanni, what are we originally graphing? What's our original graph gonna be for the guide? Awesome. Good. Isabella, what's my A? Three. Three, good, and the absolute value of that stays is three, so that's my amplitude. Nate, what's my B? Two. Good, so the period would be two pi over two, which is just pi. Olivia, is there a phase shift? No. Good. No phase shift. Rebecca, is there a vertical shift? Rebecca, is there a vertical shift? Uh, yes. Good. What is it? Good. Okay, so now, and there's no reflection because there's no negative on the front. Now I'm going to go to my key points. So zero, pi times a fourth, pi times a half, pi times three fourths, and pi, zero, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi. zero, pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, pi. And my, asymptote, my amplitude, sorry, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so here's the tricky part with a vertical shift and your reciprocal function. I'm going to actually find the asymptotes before I shift them up or down. Then I'm gonna shift them up, then I'm gonna shift my curves up and down because the asymptotes are much harder to find with a vertical shift. So this was cosine, which means I'm going to start at my amplitude, which is three. I'm gonna come down to zero, I'm gonna go down again, up to zero and up to three, and I'm gonna plot my curve. Juliana, what happens at the x-intercept? 
asymptotes. Good job. Now there's asymptotes, right? I only have two. So I've got to drop this down and drop this down to get my four, third and fourth. Now, because there's a vertical shift, before I plot those parabolas, I have to take that purple curve and shift it up one. So you want to do this again after you find your asymptotes, but before you do your parabolas. So everything's going to get shifted up one place. And my curve now looks like this. And my parabolas bounce off of those shifted points. So when you're dealing with the reciprocal functions, find the asymptotes before you do a vertical shift. Because, okay, so let's pretend we didn't. Here was my curve, right? And then I sh shift everything up one. How do you know where the x-intercepts were unless they are perfectly in line? So technically, the x-intercepts are now here. That's where the asymptotes have to go, not where they are now. So it's easier, in my opinion, doesn't mean you have to do it this way, but it's easier, in my opinion, to find them before you move because this is not where the asymptote goes. The asymptote has to go through here where the original x-intercepts were. Because you're finding the trig function of the angle and then adding something to it. So if you find the trig function of the angle, that's when it's undefined. Even if you add something to it, it's still undefined. All right, questions for me? Again, your test is going to cover, so we go back to like the beginning of the radian stuff. The stuff that was on the quiz, 6'1 and 6'3, and then 6'4, which is sine and cosine, and then just the secant and the cosecant part of 6'5.